You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Claret and Blue podcast. Uh, once again, we're able to offer up a special guest in the form of Rob the Bish Bishop. How are you, Bish? I'm fine, thank you, Matt. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Villa Top there. This isn't fake excitement, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm genuinely such a nerd and such a geek that I really love this book that we're going to talk about. It's Aston Villa, The Complete Record. Now, I won't steal your thunder by saying too much, but this is this is a project that you've devoted hours and hours and hours and days and weeks to previously. And yes. you've got an update for us coming, haven't you? Yes, it's the 2022 update. The last one, you may recall, was 2010. Uh, there were a couple of original ones which you should give credit to. Uh, the, the first one was uh, 1988, um, just after Villa got back in the Premier League, sorry, in the first division. Uh, and then there was another one in 1992, just before the Premier League started. Um, and then Frank Holt, who's, who's a a meticulous statistician he's, he's just amazing he, he never ceases to amaze me that the detail he gets i got together with him and we decided to do one in 2010 which i, I believe you've got um uh, a, a well-thumbed copy i think well, <laughs> I, I think a lot of people's are i keep telling you it's well thumbed here's my <laughs> copy so the my mic- copy was bad but it's better than that i don't know i don't know whether it's the 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 old school journalist in me, or or what? But there's still a pleasure to be had in actually accessing information and stats from a book, from as a opposed book. Yeah, to yeah. Soccer Base or whatever website, Transfer Market, whatever websites people use. I don't know. It just feels. I don't know. Yes, it's almost like it's more real. Uh, and obviously, what's on on websites, etc., is absolutely fine, uh, and that's the way of the world now. But. I think people still do like to be able to just pick something up, flick through, find it, in, in, instead of having to trawl through hours and hours maybe of trying to find something online. You know, it's probably my age, but I, I find it easier to, to go to a book any time. But then again, I'm not great with technology. <laughs> it's, I mean, but, but say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. You shouldn't judge it by the cover of mine because it's battered and fallen. <laughs> no. but it does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? Aston Villa, the complete record. The complete- so... You know, I said we've said before you come on that we, we can't have it as too blatant a plug or too, no. too blatant an advert. But sell it to us, Bish. Tell us, tell us what 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 people will will, will get in this in this book. I suppose we we could, in a way, start with what you won't get. And as as you and I are, are aware, uh, there will be one little piece of information missing unless anyone can come up with it between now and when it goes to print. That that is the scorers from a game in 1880, an FA Cup tie against Wensbury Strollers, which Villa actually won 5-3. And now we know the lineup, but what we haven't got are the scorers. And they just were not recorded anywhere at the time. This is partly because at that time, uh, people weren't so concerned. The game was very much in its infancy. People weren't so concerned about the actual details. It was the overall team effort and the fact that Villa won 5-3. That's all that really mattered in the end. What we do believe, although we've got no evidence, is that a fellow called Archie Hunter, who was one of Villa's pioneers, uh, he would almost certainly have scored that day he played. Now, he, in fact, is Villa's record FA Cup scorer, regardless of whether he scored that day. Uh, we've got him down with 34 official goals. I think people often think uh, that the FA Cup record scorer uh, must be Billy Walker because he's got more actual overall goals, 2-4-4, four, 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 and Harry Hampton scored 2-4-2, two, two, uh, but he's the record league scorer. But neither of them scored as many as Hunter. So we know he's got at least 34. And if anybody can tell us the definitive score is from that game, uh, I did try. I, I, it crossed my mind. I wonder what they did in the 88 and 92 editions. So I did go back to check. And uh, it got worse. Uh, they didn't even acknowledge that the game took place. They, they It was a first-round game. And they made out as if... The first round was against Nottingham Forest, which is actually the second round. If Archie Hunter's a, a striker worth his salt, he'd be climbing them all anyway, wouldn't he? Um, well, yes. And I think another thing to think about with, with that, Matt, is that a lot of the information, not just with Aston Villa, but with any club, from those early days, 
I don't know how we can be totally certain that every single detail was correct. You used to get goal mouse scrambles. But bear in mind, the players hadn't got, not na just names, hadn't even got numbers, uh, which didn't come until 1939. So, um, you know, how on earth anybody identified every single scorer from every single match? I don't. I just don't think it was possible. So, if there's anybody, anybody who remembers being at that match, um, <laughs> A, can you tell us the scorers? But B, more importantly, can you give us the secret to eternal life? Um, <laughs> obviously, this is the, the updated edition and i want to talk about this but i want to talk about the original how many hours you know what, the scale of the project when you originally did this for the 2010 version give us a flavor of, of, what, of what goes oh, into it Bish. I, I don't think i could start to estimate how many hours and days and months even years went into the original uh because we realized that um the 92 version wasn't perhaps as accurate as it, as it might have been so we didn't just take that and update it we totally rewrote it uh and frank researched all the uh the stats the scorers the attendances he's, he's gone to just so much detail how many hours oof, I, I bet we were working on it for two or three years before it actually came out in 2010 i think it was about october time that year let's say there's a discrepancy or something that you're not sure about from the exit from the original well, that, that predated you what kind of journey do you go on is it is it the archives at the club is it the microfilm at central that's library a, yeah that's a fairly um good good point to start i think because whatever is at the club is as, as official as you will get and I'm, I'm not saying absolutely everything is going to be correct but you know pretty much all of it will be or, or as correct as anybody can be uh, so that information was essential um all the player profiles we we we, we did as well we you know completely rewrote them uh uh, there's also a section about games to remember which almost didn't make this edition uh we did think that we were going to be struggling for space um and uh i actually suggested well while i love the section and there's some nice action pictures in it um is it something we should maybe ditch uh, just to make sure all the essential information gets in but the publisher was keen to do it and somehow he's, he's found a way so that section is in um and we've added just the last the last game that was in there uh, up to 2010 was that that uh, six four against uh, blackburn rovers in the league cup semi-final uh but since then we've added four more um i'm, I'm just trying to look at my notes here to, to remember which four there was a four three against the baggies um when it was three three half time and then ben Tech's penalty um the fabulous win at wembley against liverpool and there's a, a great photo accompanying that uh, a villas player celebrating in the background and the player in the foreground looking totally disgruntled is steven gerrard <laughs> so so that worked out rather nicely and then the other game was the 5-5 against forest yeah. uh, which was quite a, a night and i think anybody can guess the, the the very last latest one that was in is a certain game against uh, liverpool 7-2 <laughs> <laughs> what's your a bit of an open open-ended one but what's your what's the best thing about being able to, to work on a project like this i think it's the satisfaction of knowing that it's for all time it's not just i mean i've done other books obviously as well i did the euros and villains one which i published myself and worked out well and it's great uh, and i'm really so pleased with that uh, because i went out on a bit of a limb with it and i had to fund it myself uh, but it worked uh but that that is if you like stories about aston villa about specifically the european cup and other european competitions and i did a, another one that was about players the best players in the premier league but this if you like it, i think it's regarded as, uh, without being blasphemous a lot of people regard it as the villa bible and i just think for, for me that's so satisfying to think that i've had a part in in compiling that although I would give the greater credit to Frank Holt because he's the man with all the statistics. You know, if you ask me a question now about a date or a result, I, I will hesitate or I might hesitate. He wouldn't. He'd just tell you. It's a, it's a lasting thing. I just hope somebody might keep on doing it when, once I've got... Just a silly little thing. And I don't know, there can't be too many occasions when I'd need this, but if I want to know 
how many goals Simon Steinrod scored versus how many goals Gary Thompson scored, for example, in the in the mid eighties. I'll go I'll go to the complete record and, yes. and I'll get it there. I mean if if I want to know what the what the I think Villa had a, a really bad attendance under Lambert a few years ago. And it might even have been the match. Um remember Sid being on the pitch um with the European Cup for for a game. It was it might have oh, been an anniversary right. game. I might be, I might be getting this wrong, but I wanted to see when Villa had, had a lowest had 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 a lower top flight attendance than that game and Lo and behold, it took a little bit of sifting, but lo and Look, behold, you could find it's there. It, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I say, I know that it, it appeals to kind of saddos like me who probably need it or have used it for for research for, and work for the job. Yes, for the job. What, yeah. what kind of what kind of response have you had previously from kind of gen, general Villa fans who just want this kind of bible on their shelves? Like you just said, that they're glad just to be able to have a, a reference point and to and to check. As, as I say, sometimes. You, you do have to search a bit. The, the obvious things like the, the records, like the most, most goals, the biggest win, um, highest scorer, highest attendance. I mean, lowest attendance isn't something we'd really look at. Um, but so you, you would have to look. Uh, and obviously, if you go back to way, way back in the 1800s, some of them were just 2,000, maybe less. Um, one one really low one I can recall. It's from the mid eighties, a midweek game against Southampton. I think it was eighty five, maybe eighty six, and it was eight thousand. And you, you just can't imagine that uh, at Villa Park. But, but that happened, and that, that must. I, I wasn't at that game. That must have been a, a dreadful atmosphere. I don't want to kind of make a, a, a rod for your own back here, but that you're going uh, to. <laughs> 2022 now. This 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 update's obviously been 12 12 years in 12 the making. Yeah. Mm. How often? <laughs> it might not be you who's doing it, but how often do you think these should be done? Do you think every decade is a good, well, is a good way yeah. of doing it? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the original thought was that we might do it for the 150th anniversary, uh, which is two years time, which which would have been nice, obviously, you know, to, to have it as the complete record at that point. But I, I'm aware of quite a few other publications that will be happening then. And I just felt, well, there may just be too much. It may be too crowded with uh, books that, you know, people have got too much choice, um, won't know which one to choose. And rather than muddy the waters with yet another one, uh, let, let all the ones that concentrate purely on the 150 years, you know, go their own way and, you know, leave it. We'll do it now. Uh, in fact, it, this should have happened um, a couple of years ago. The, the original publisher, when they approached me, they wanted to do it then. And I declined because of the COVID situation. Eventually, they let us down. Um, and, and now, thankfully, I've got a publisher in the northeast who is excellent. Um, and he's done a fabulous job. You can order it, I think, up, right up, to, the, up to next Friday, or Thursday or Friday. A pre-order will get your name in the back. What uh, that bish? I think it's the it's the end of the month, thirtieth of June. I think thirtieth of June. People, if people want to get their their names in it, which you know, let's face it, is a is a really nice kind of momentum. Yes, I think a lot of people like that. Yeah, they they need to order that through the publisher. We'll supply a link to where people can get hold of it uh, oh, in the thanks. comments yeah. when we when we put the put the the podcast live. Did the original one? Go out of print. I know it was um, it was flying off the shelves. Yes, yes. Um, uh, several people over the years have asked me, "Can I get hold of a copy?" Uh, and I just I can't. It's, it, I just do not have one. Um, I um, a guy who runs the Stratford Lions asked me at one point, uh, and amazingly, I'm going back a few years now. I saw one in W. H. Smith at the fort. And it was there, they got it for £20 instead of 25 So he was delighted. Uh, but if if you look online for the previous one, you see it for £60, £70, £80. But you won't, you won't once this one comes out because people will have the new one. But yeah. it did. Be, it was sold out, yeah. It must be a labour love, Bish, because, you know, with respect to the publishing industry, it's difficult to get rich off it's the back. Just- off yes. the back of books now, has it been enjoyable? All the times you think, oh, oh my yes. God, I've got to go yes. through that, and I've got to, I've got to double check this yes. and see if that's how it is. It is very enjoyable, and as I say, very satisfying. 
and to think your name is associated with something so permanent. Uh, but if we're looking at this from a financial point of view, I don't expect to make a penny. If the publisher gets his money back, I'll be happy. That will, that will be enough. If there is a bit of profit at the end of it, well, I'll take it for a pint. I mean, I did okay with the Euros one, but I took the, the financial gamble. Yeah. And I made two or three grand in the end out of that, which yeah. was fine. But I had to out outlay seven and a half thousand for, for, just for print. But even then, even like turning that that bit of profit, Bishop, I won't get too deep into talking money. But even turning that bit of prof, profit, probably for the amount of hours that you put in, probably it, yeah, it didn't, minimum wage, isn't it? If nowhere that, near minimum wage. Yeah. No, no, no. You're right. No, no. The the the, the whole purpose of this, you 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 wouldn't. Um, I mean, I think we all do the job because we love it. Uh, although we, we we get paid and. Well, you do. I, I have to rely on what villa might give me now. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? You, you sort of, you, you you don't do it for the money. You do it for the money, but you do it because you like, love the job and yeah. it's the satisfaction, really. It's providing a service, really, that the likes to yourself and, and, and Frank. And I, think, I still think there's so many websites now. Yes, there's some very, very trustworthy sources, but there's also some untrustworthy sources. So mm. I think it, I think it is it is providing a, a service and making sure that you know the the history of this brilliant football club you know is is kept alive and can be passed down yes. from generation to generation. It's nice to be able to be in a position uh, to do that. And then now because I'm sort of semi-retired, just working a bit of freelance for the club, I've had more time to look at it um, and to work on it. Um, so yeah, it, it's. Uh, I, th I think I think people will be happy with it. One thing I will say is that it's far more attractive than the previous edition. Um, the new publisher has found lots of pictures I hadn't seen before, um, and his cover is great. Um, the whole thing, I just think it looks. It's a nice uh, production, or it will be. Can you get mine with a concrete cover or a steel cover, just to give it a bit more? Just to more keep, keep it safe. <laughs> yeah. Tell us some, without giving too much away, give, tell us okay, some of the no, that are in there. No. Well, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Villa probably produced, along with Sheffield Wednesday, football's first substitutes. Now, subs didn't come into the English game until uh, 1965. But way back uh, in 1898, Villa played a game at Sheffield Wednesday. They were trailing 3-1 with 10 minutes to go. And the light wasn't good enough. And, of course, no floodlights. So the game was abandoned. Uh, no one was quite sure what would happen. But the league ruling was that Villa had to travel back to Sheffield just to play the final 10 minutes. I mean, it, these days they play the whole game. Um but they went back in March the following year uh, and two of the players who played in the original game for Villa uh, were, were not available or injured uh, and there had to be two replacements. Uh, so those were effectively, uh, was George Johnson was one of them uh, and Billy Garrity. Uh, and they were, if you like, Villa's very first sub substitutes. Again, just for 10 minutes, there were different teams almost. Um, and Villa actually lost 4-1 in the end. And the, the guy I feel sorry for is a fellow called Frank Beddingfield because he made his debut in the original game and scored Villa's goal. And he never played a game. <laughs> so that was his only game. So, again, little things like that. And these are all mentioned in what we call the sidebars uh, where the, the season results and statistics appear. If it's similar to, to the way that the, the, the previous, previous one's done, it's probably about... Six to eight, eight to ten. Yeah, sometimes a few more. There. How do you decide? Is it is it the quirky? Is it the significant? Is it a yeah. mixture of uh, those things? Sometimes it's yeah, it can, it can be anything from. I suppose depending on how much material there is, some seasons lend themselves more to it than others. Um, if there isn't much material available, you might mention or pretty much it every debut or. And yeah. Frank, Frank has done most of those, and he often mentions when it was a last game for someone. I'm not saying we, we mention that every single time, but I, I've noticed over the years, if you want to ch check a, a final game for someone and not have to go through the actual grid, um, that it's usually mentioned in the sidebar. Uh, and then there's the quirky ones, as you mentioned, for instance, the, the two I've talked about, and 
and ver various other things and Frank's just uh, seems to have this way of finding little things that are just that bit different. I'm taking Mrs. Kendrick out for a meal tonight. If I would want to wow her with one piece <laughs> of Aston Villa don't trivia. Mention, don't mention football. <laughs> See, if she storms out, I've only got to pay for the starter then. If I want to wow her, <laughs> if I want to wow her with one piece of Aston Villa trivia that can be found in Aston Villa Complete Record, updated edition, 2022, what would it be? What's, what's one nugget? 1995 at QPR. Uh, Lee Hendry uh, made his debut that day. And he neither started nor finished the game. He, he went on as a sub and was sent off in stoppage time for a second yellow card. It's um, funny you mention Lee Hendry because we've got him on the podcast uh, oh, right. a couple right. of years ago in lockdown. He was telling us the, the story of that. He had to go down, trudge down. He was at Loftus Road, I think, wasn't he? He had to trudge, yes. trudge down yeah. the touch line to the, the dressing room. And uh, I think Ray Wilkins was the player manager at QPI, I was saying at the time. And Ray Wilkins came in. He yes. put an arm around his shoulder and said, listen, and listen, son, you know, you're a good player. I've heard great things about you. Chin up. Yes. You know, everything will be everything will be fine. Yes. You've got a great career ahead of you. And apparently Brian Little blanked him. He never, he never spoke to him <laughs> until, until the following week, I think. So it was a real introduction to the kind of, you know, no, that, that, was a bit, yeah, that was a bit harsher, Brian, because if I recall, neither of the yellow cards was particularly serious. They, they were both innocuous offences. It's just that, Having booked him once, when the referee did it a second time, he had to go. But uh, what a way to start your career. Another interesting one, another player finished his Villa career that day, uh, Nigel Spink, and he finished it playing in midfield. He <laughs> Another quirk in, mid, in, in stoppage time that day, he was on the bench and he went, Villa had used their other two subs, and Ian Taylor was injured. And Nigel Spink's final appearance for Villa was as an outfield player. Would you have been at that game, Bish? Can you remember? Yes, it, it was. It was just a. <laughs> it was a staggering game. It was. I, I also remember it is the only day I can remember um, Alan Wright being given the run around because he was such a steady player. But it was, I'm trying to think of the lad uh, Sinclair, the winger. Uh, he ran him ragged, and it was only one nil, but. It was, it was just before Christmas, and, and I know the, the ref was he was handing out cards like I don't know what, and I think my my match report for the Birmingham Mail was something to the effect that uh, I think it was Alan Wilkie was uh, handing out cards like his early Christmas cards, but Villa weren't amused. I bet you can't remember Espin got on, can you? For the couple of minutes that he played in midfield, was he any good? Was he like Sid? It was it was brilliant. No, I can't remember. <laughs> it was it was it was over. I think he. he if he touched the ball, I, I, I can't even, you know, I wouldn't say that. Thanks so much for your time. Um, okay. Like I said, Thank I, you. I'm, not, I'm not laying this on thick. It, it is actually, it, it's a must have for, for Villa fans who like to have that tangible, you know, something yes. you can get your, get your hands on, yes. that tan, tangible record of, of the club. Um, and hopefully better condition than yours. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to me being my new one, to be honest. Um, I could probably use that to prop up a table or something. The old one once I've, <laughs> once I've got me new one. But just, just finally, we'll, like I said, we'll drop the link and the details of how people order it and get their hands on it um, in the comments section with this. Okay, thanks. Just so the the pre order to get your name in the book is by the end of the end of June. Yeah. When are these actually going to be available? Kind of available, yeah. Uh, September the eighteenth, I believe, is the date. Again, that's another one that's wrong on, on Amazon. They're saying the 4th of August. They wouldn't even be aware that there's, of the book that's happening. The one they're advertising doesn't exist, really. Yeah. Well, so the advice, like, really, Bish, is to keep an eye on the publisher's, publisher's website, which we'll put in there yes. as well. That's yes. not to say people can't go to Amazon for it. No, no. Probably no, just I, be aware that Amazon's going to have to catch up a little bit with some of the yes. details. What, once they, I mean, they won't even be available of, of where to get books from at this point. One, a couple of supporters did tell me was that they'd ordered on Amazon. I told them the situation. And they'd been told by Amazon that the orders would be honoured. So I don't think anyone's going to miss out. The worst yeah. that would be, happen would be a refund. Yeah. Uh, but the, peop the two people I specifically spoke to both told me they'd cancelled and then reordered from the, the publisher. How many copies are going to be published of this one? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what... I mean, I've told the publisher that 2,000 is a, a decent figure to aim for. 
Yeah, if he's more optimistic, he might go for more. But uh, I always yeah. tend to err on the side of caution. Thank you for talking us through, it, Bish. Um, like I said, I'm really excited. On. Really excited about getting getting my hands on a copy, and we'll be we'll 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 see you soon. You've been watching Claret and Blue podcast with our special guest Rob Bishop. And until next time, up the villa, up the villa. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, up the villa. Up the villa.